five sensory mom wound. How do you know you have it as a six sensory and how can you heal it? So first of all, you need to know that you have the wound before you can heal it. And this whole video is not to say that all five sensories cause wounds on their six sensory children. There are plenty of talented five sensory moms out there who help their six sensory children feel secure in the world, feel loved, feel seen. And as long as five sensory moms are doing that about 30% of the time, that can be enough for a six sensory child to thrive and feel seen and heard, confident in their abilities to perceive their intuition and follow their creativity. Having said that, as the world gets busier and things become more costly to afford, it's becoming more common that not only single mothers are not able to fulfill that 30% attachment that creates security in a sixth sensory child, but even in a healthy marriage, if things are very expensive and both partners are working all the time, a five sensory mom may not be able to fulfill all the needs of a sixth sensory child. And what happens to that sixth sensory child? Well, what they do instead of feeling their own emotions, sensing what their boundaries are, and following intuition is they start primarily focusing on the parents' emotions and processing them, finding ways to appease them and make sure the parents are feeling relaxed and okay before addressing their own needs. And the problem with this over a long period of time is that the sixth sensory loses their sense of self and what their boundaries are. They're afraid that if they go back to themselves and address their own needs, that they're going to become discarded by the five sensory parents basically abandoned. And when you're a child, you can't exactly move out and declare independence before you're of age to do so. You really are reliant on your parents. And so if they're not giving you all of the love and validation that you need in order to feel secure. That's when you're going to flip your focus on them and try to appease the parents and forget about meeting your own needs. And when that happens, that sets you up in life to be very vulnerable when you're looking for secure, attached relationships as a partner. You're constantly focused on the other person. It's very easy for them to manipulate you and do dastardly things to make you feel less than worthy. And it's not worth it to feel that way. What you need to do instead is feel your own emotions and create your own secure attachment style as a sixth sensory. So the signs that you have this style and you had a five sensory mother who might have created a wound in you as a sixth sensory is that number one, you feel like you can't set any healthy boundaries with anybody. It's like you're that type of person that I can't cut out any relationships in my life that are negative because then I'll have nobody to talk to. If you genuinely feel that way, that means you don't have a secure attachment style in your relationships. And that probably comes from a wound that you got in childhood from your five sensory mom not making you feel secure, loved and attached. And so you need to address that wound in order to build the confidence to set boundaries with other people and protect your own energy and your own integrity in life. That way, when you're going out to seek an appropriate partnership, either with the five sensory or another six sensory, you're going to be able to meet your own needs first, and you're going to have a more successful relationship with the five sensory compared to if you've got an active mother wound going on. Another sign that you have this negative attachment style from your mom is that you're constantly reading into the negativity of somebody's email or text message or their tone of voice to see that, hey, am I going to be safe in this situation? Is this person gonna go away? Am I gonna be abandoned? When you're constantly listening for that with big ears, it's a sign that you didn't have a really secure attachment style with your mom and that you need to get really comfortable with who you are instead of looking for ways to appease people who are bringing you more negativity. You have to look after yourself first and then set boundaries with those people bringing you negativity that they can't bring you more negativity. And then the next sign that you could have a mother wound, an anxious attachment style as a sixth sensory is that you feel like you're an imposter with your group of friends. You feel like you're constantly hiding and you can't come out and tell people who you are as a sixth sensory. You can't really talk about being spiritual, for example. Now, having said that, it doesn't mean that you aren't discerning or you aren't talking about these things 
in front of people who don't agree with you or don't appreciate it, but it means that you don't have any secure attachments or any friendships where you can bring up these topics that are so important to you at all. We all need community and we all need friendship. And it's okay to be discerning with people who are different and have different beliefs than us. But if we have no mirrors or no community, then that can be a problem. The fifth sign that you have this mother wound with a five sensory mom is that you have passive aggressive ways to get your needs met because you don't really know how to communicate your boundaries. So you find little manipulative ways to get people to do what you want. For example, you might manipulatively say you want one thing, but you're actually tricking somebody into doing something else that you want them to do for you. If you are resorting to different kinds of manipulations to get what you want, and this could be something like, um, I don't know, you're dating somebody and then you leave a lot of scratch marks on their body so that if anybody else is dating them and you're not in a relationship yet, somebody will see the scratch marks and know that this person is taken or claimed. Or maybe the passive aggressive thing you're doing is making sure you drink all of the coffee and you get all of the coffee in the office before somebody else gets it because you know that coworker down the hall drinks it all and you want to make sure you get your share before they get theirs. It could be just little passive aggressive things that you're doing to control the situation and you might even justify it like, oh, I'm getting ahead or I'm marking my territory and it's a competition out there. It's a rat race and I need to do this little thing to to win and we can make those decisions in unconscious states sometimes in a split second and then realize oh crap i shouldn't have done that you know even i had a moment like that where i did something and i didn't even realize i'd done it and then afterwards i realized i did it and i felt very embarrassed there was some kind of subconscious thing going on so we all make mistakes but if you're resorting to this kind of manipulations and trickery a lot to get your way instead of communicating what you want and setting proper boundaries with people about you what you want that's the number one that's number five on the list but number one sign that you do have some kind of mother wound because that's how you were getting your needs met you couldn't do it by communicating directly with your parents because it was too dangerous for you to do so it wasn't allowed it wasn't accepted for you to have your needs met as a child and so you had to do it some through some kind of manipulation or trickery you had to cry to be able to get the gifts that you wanted or Maybe you had to run away in order to get your parents to treat you kindly. Whatever that tactic was that you did to get your way as a kid, and there were all kinds of different ones, but those things are cries for help because you can't be yourself as a kid and you can't ask for your needs to be met. And it's all a sign that your five sensory parents are very logical and too busy or really acknowledge who you are as a sensitive sixth sensory. The first step as a sixth sensory to overcome these patterns is you have to acknowledge that you have them in the first place. We can pretend that we're angels and that we're so busy taking care of everybody that of course we're always behaving productively and we're always being our best selves. Having said that, we all have a dark side and if we're not willing to look at our own dark side, we're not going to catch those moments when we are being a bit manipulative, when we are behaving not our best because we're too ashamed to even go there or look at them. However, if we actually go there and look at that and say, hey, I behaved badly that day and it wasn't my best self showing up, that's when you can start realizing, hey, this need of mine isn't being met and this is why I'm behaving in this way. You start being responsible for whatever bad behavior has come up. And not that it's all like really bad. Sometimes we're just trying to make our way through life and survive and it's just coming from our ego. Having said that, we have to be responsible and own all of those ego patterns in order to become our best selves as six sensories. And when we start owning that, that's when we can start really analyzing, well, if I was behaving that way, why? What need wasn't being met? And then you can understand how you're going to meet your own needs in the future instead of resorting to trickery or manipulation to get your needs met. And then we're actually able to show up in our relationships with boundaries. If we have somebody in our life that's constantly bringing us negativity and abusing us and then we lash out in a manipulative way because somebody else brought us negativity first, we have to be responsible for that and understand that we should have set boundaries in the first place to stop that negativity from coming in. And 
when we're responsible that way, instead of trying to get revenge and play games in order to get our needs met in response to negativity, that's when we've got control over the situation. That's when we're showing up in a high vibration as a sixth sensory, and we're starting to take full ownership of who we are as six sensories and that wound that we may have from childhood begins to heal 